Hello and welcome to my full review of all of the Imperial Knights releases. I just want to say straight away that I have wanted to make this video for such a long time. Since about two years ago in 2018, since Games Workshop uh, released the new Imperial Knight Codex along with the, uh, the Dominus class chassis and a little bit before that the, the Armager Warglaives. And that's prompted them to uh, create and release uh, other units for Imperial Knights and to move on and release and the Chaos Knight set and codex last year. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to look at all of the sort of new releases uh, for that range uh, individually. I'll compare them to other uh, previous iterations of knights. I'll do a load of size comparisons um, with some titans as well. So uh, if you do like walkers and do like titans, uh, this video hopefully will be right up your street. March time, April time, when uh, Games Workshop released the Forge Bane uh, box set. Uh, lovely little box set. It had uh, one new uh, Necron miniature, which is absolutely cool. Uh, I think it's a Cryptek. And it contained a load of uh, Skatari, but most importantly, it contained uh, the first set of new knights, new chassis of knights, these Armager class, uh, which you can see uh, before you on, on the left. Now at that time, that was the only way of uh, getting hold of these two miniatures. And they're equipped with the Reaper Chain Cleaver and uh, Thermal Spear. They also have an optional sort of pintle mounted weapon, uh, either a melter gun uh, or a heavy stubber. Pretty cool kit, uh, but at the time, the only way of getting these uh, was uh, through that um, box set. But the entry fee really wasn't too high uh, to get hold of these two. And later, Games Workshop would go on to release them uh, in their own kit, uh, and then build on them with the, the Halverins uh, in light of the new Codex and the new Dominus um, chassis knights. So they were really the forefront of uh, the new kind of Knights refresh. Uh, we've had three codexes of the Knights. One came less than a year after the first, and this one here uh, came uh, in 2018. Now it does share the same uh, exact artwork as the, uh, the second Imperial Knight Codex, but with uh, you know a bit of a change of font and things. So if you're interested in Imperial Knights at all or collecting this army, this is the, the sort of codex you, you need to pick up. It's absolutely fantastic. It's what I had hoped for the Imperial Knight codex to be when, when Imperial Knights were first, first released, when they only had the one kit. Uh, and then they released the codex and that codex literally had, I think, three uh, data sheets. Uh, the Paladin, the Errant, and the Gallant. So severely lacking and very small codex. This is, is a much more fleshed out codex. Uh, you can normally tell when they are over 100 pages. This one's 120 pages, so it's, it's not too bad. If they're, if they're 100 pages, then they're kind of like a starter codex. And um, yeah, there's not much content in a codex of less than 100 pages. So that was two years ago, sort of March, April time. And those two, uh, Armager class knights uh, were really the forefront of all of the Imperial Knight uh, new releases, uh, which followed suit about three months later in June when I unboxed the Imperial Knight Castellan. Uh, for this new release, they um, gave us a, a full bodied um, brand new codex with 8th edition rules in. Uh, they also gave us a new set of Armager uh, class knights uh, called the Helverins, which have these long barreled auto cannons talk about them uh, a bit later. They gave us a, a nice looking scenery piece, which is quite cheap really, £25 uh, for a faction scenery piece, although it is quite straightforward to put together, uh, and did include a couple of uh, pieces that we, we'd never seen before. They also uh, brought out two new uh, Dominus chassis class uh, Imperial Knights with the dual power cores in them, uh, both the Valiant, uh, which is more of a short range Dominus class uh, Imperial Knight, and also a Castellan, which is a much longer range uh, Knight. They're both shooty Knights, you know, they're both ranged Knights. Um, they don't have close combat weapons. They are both pretty expensive, but then Knights are expensive anyway. When I first released my unboxing of uh, an Imperial Knight uh, Paladin, 
I published that in March of 2014 and I think they were about 85 or 90 pounds when they first came out but that was six years ago can you believe it it's been six years of uh, Imperial Knights so they definitely needed a bit of a refresh after four years of them being out and uh, Games Workshop uh, did them a, a justice in this but not only did Games Workshop stop at releasing the Armager Warglaves, the Armager Helverins, uh, a scenery piece in the form of a, the Sir Kristen Forge Shrine, and the two separate Dominus class uh, Imperial Knights. They also released, which I thought was just as big news, uh, a new kind of main box for Imperial Knights. Now I sort of understand why they uh, put um, the Knight Preceptor Canis Rex on the front because he is a character and uh, Games Workshop do like to uh, put their characters front and centre on their boxes uh, just to show and highlight that you can make one. However that box is quite special. Um, although it increased the, the price of uh, the Imperial Knight box set um, from I think £90 to 95 one of those sets is 95 it did include everything you can possibly uh, want or dream of to make all of the other Imperial Knights. You can make a different Preceptor if you wish, instead of the Thunderstrike Gauntlet you can have it with the uh, Reaper Chainsword, uh, you can make the Knight Crusader with the uh, Gatling Cannon and the Rapid Fire Battle Cannon, uh, you can make the Knight Warden with the Gatling Cannon and the Thunderstrike Gauntlet, you can make the Errant with the Thermal Cannon and a, chains and a Reaper Chainsword, you can make the Knight Paladin with the Rapid Fire Battle Cannon and you can also make the Gallant. So you can make a total of seven Imperial Knights, seven different Imperial Knights with that one kit. Uh, so that was groundbreaking. That kit came out in September. So you had a bit of a staggered release that year. You had March, the Forge Shrine uh, set with the, the new Armagers. A few months later, you had the Castellan Valiant and the Forge Shrine and the Helverins. And then a few months after that, you had the uh, Knight Preceptor. So a bit of a staggered release and everyone, including myself, was, was waiting patiently for this Knight Preceptor. It, um, Games Workshop did take quite a while to, to release that, quite a few months after the, the Codex's release itself. Anyway, moving back to my collection and the future. So here is uh, one of my Imperial Knights that I've uh, painted. It's all finished and uh, this just gives you an idea of the colour scheme that I will be uh, going for with the rest of them. They're all going to be this black and gold. It matches my uh, Titan Legio, uh, which are the Legio uh, Xerxes in this um, lovely black and gold. I'm looking forward to cracking on and painting them. Uh, I think I'll go for the, the smaller uh, armages first and then move on to the, the Dominus. I'll probably leave the Forge Shrine till last, but as I go through this and uh, paint all of the models, of course there'll be a showcase. Uh, showcase videos on this channel are quite rare but it's an opportunity for me to show you uh, finished painted uh, miniatures without going through any of the rules which I like to do in my actual review videos. So moving forward the next man in the collection I would definitely like to get a couple of uh, Moirax pattern armages they are very similar to, to these, um, but they have different armor plates, uh, different um, carapaces, and yeah, different weapon loadouts. Everything from uh, siege claws to lightning lock ranged weapons. I'm still deciding on the weapon loadout I'm going to go for, but no doubt if you're subscribed to the channel, you'll be the first to see uh, unboxings and reviews of them. If I get one with one weapon loadout and another with a different, I'll do them as separate unboxings uh, so you get to see the, the weapons and the miniature itself as like one, one video. I may expand the collection and get another Castellan, possibly, possibly another normal Imperial Knight, maybe a Preceptor or a Gallant, but it'll just be one of those. I'm definitely going to start a small collection of Serastus Knights. That's an absolute given. Now that there are eight, I say normal sized knights, including the um, Dominus class, having four Serastus knights operate sort of on their own with a couple of um, similar knights with them. 
is the vision I want to go down uh, as making it like a, a battle line in front of um, the Titan Legion, backed up by a multitude of uh, Secutari. And, um, but as I've just said, I'll probably just get another couple of armagers uh, to make it six. Can't see myself getting, um, you know, more armagers than Imperial Knights. No way. So, also moving forward in terms of uh, like collections and uh, Games Workshop miniatures and things, what they've done is Games Workshop also a couple of years ago started releasing Adeptus Titanicus. They brought that out and um, as part of the first set, the Grandmaster Edition, uh, they had Warlord Titan, which is right here. And when that first came out, people thought, oh, can I proxy it as a, an Imperial Knight? It's smaller than Imperial, an Imperial Knight. I don't think you could proxy it. It looks really cool, uh, a bit bigger than the Helverins. Sure, I'm not totally convinced it would work as kind of like a separate robot as itself because everything is like miniaturized, you know. Uh, the, the, it's got small little missile pods, the, the shields are quite small, uh, the legs get really, really small at the point. I'm not sure it really fits in being, being proxied. It would be cool if it was the same size as an Imperial Knight, that would be great. And maybe you could then proxy it. But anyway, what's also cool uh, that they did is they miniaturized uh, Imperial Knights. And uh, yeah, this is, yeah, uh, about right for size comparisons. Um, I will show you uh, this um, towards the end of the video, a uh, uh, proper size comparison between an Imperial Knight and a Warlord. And you'll see that the Warlord barely goes up to the knee. And it's the same in the 28 mil scale. Um, I'll show you that shortly. But yeah, they made these Knights. And as you can see, they're so, so cute. Looking at this one in a similar kind of pose, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the little Adeptus Titanicus Knights are, yeah, just shin shin height, I guess. Um, but really, really cool, really cute, big fan. And what they've also done is they've done the same for the Serastus Knights. Here's a Serastus Knight Lan Lancer. Games Workshop will be releasing the other uh, Serastus Knights for Adeptus Titanicus very soon. I think they're just ready to, to ship as soon as this uh, situation improves. Um, and again, that would be the same uh, height uh, differences um, between your Knights and your, your Serastus. So really, really cool time for Knights. And so after the success of these Imperial Knights, because they have been a success, uh, for Games Workshop to invest in creating a brand new Knight uh, less than a year after, and then three years after that bring out a whole new slurry of knights including the preceptors and the uh, dominus chassis knights and all of the armages and for forge world to get in involved as well and to to bring out a couple of moiraxes and build unique knights as well such as the serastus and um, they've definitely been a success and to build on that games workshop then took that momentum and uh, gave us all Chaos Knights last year. Now, okay, I don't think uh, Games Workshop committed fully to that uh, Chaos Knight release. In my opinion, they should have released at least two new models and they just released one box set where you could make two variants. And let's face it, one of the variants was essentially a Gallant um, and the other one, they pulled out a laser destructor from somewhere, which is normally, um, you know, a, a Warhound weapon. Uh, well, a dual turbo laser destructor. But still, it was nice um, that we, we got something for, for Chaos. I just wish that they'd release a box set of extras, uh, or just ex one extra sprue, like a Tyrant upgrade sprue, or a Armager upgrade upgrade sprue or something like that um, for £10 or £15 or so which had a load of chaos specific appendages and, and extras like armour plates and things like that so you could modify your existing Valiant and Castellan. Now kit bashing and uh, customising Imperial models has been a mainstay for chaos players since time immemorial I guess. Everything from vehicles to troops even to titans to knights when they first um, came came out people were already kit bashing knights and, and giving them a, a chaos feel to them. 
but I just think uh, for that particular re release last year, instead of a codex and just one kit, I think Games Workshop could have released a couple more things just to set a, a more solid foundation uh, for that release and it would have made it more successful. I will be purchasing a Chaos Knight very soon. I'm looking forward to it. My, my plan was to have it as a, an Imperial Knight and just use the legs in a different pose. But I'm happy with the, the Imperial Knight um, leg poses at the moment and the way I, I've uh, posed their hips and their weapons and things like that. I, I, I can live with it. So that Chaos Knight will just be a Chaos Knight. So I hope you stay tuned to the channel for that because that will undoubtedly be your next form of knight action uh, on this channel. So what I want to do now is just go through some of the, the rules and new additions to this release uh, found in the new codex. And then right at the end, uh, we'll go through some size comparisons with other knights and other titans, of course. For me, it just makes sense to do those size comparisons at the end of the video. So we start off with the Armager Warglaives here. First thing to note is all of the knights in the codex are uh, Lords of War. Um, but these particular war glaives, uh, you, you can have just one on its own milling about, which is fine. Uh, or you can have uh, two, or you can have uh, four in one unit, uh, which is great. As I said before, you've, you've got the heavy stubber or the melter gun on there. I've just equipped the, the war glaives with the uh, melter guns, but they are detachable. You know, they just slide in quite, quite easily. They slot in there. Um, thermally, which is great. They, they're equipped with the thermal spears, uh, which was a new weapon introduced, you know, like six years ago or so. And uh, that was a nice 30 inch range assault D3 8, strength 8, AP minus 4, and a D6 weapon. And it also has that melter rule where if uh, target is within half range, you can roll two dice when inflicting the damage and discard the lowest result. And uh, they had a good movement speed of uh, 14 inches. I think what they were trying to do to begin with is not be affected by the moving, moving and firing of heavy weapons. So they gave this thermal spear an assault uh, characteristic, which is great. You know, typically you're going to get two or more shots with that thing. Um, so it's great at taking out high toughness uh, units or vehicles or what have you. And uh, to begin with, they had the Reaper Chain Cleaver with just one... Uh, attack uh, characteristic which was uh, just the times two strength then with the codex they introduced this sweep um, profile uh, where where it kept with the strength of the user and it reduced the AP to minus two and only gave it a damage one but you were able to get uh, two hit rolls for each attack so that's like eight attacks right there which is pretty good actually everything else was kind of mediocre uh, the toughness was good at 7 though, and the weapon skill and ballistic skill were both 3+. plus. had a decent number of wounds, and yeah, it was quite fast at 14 inches. I mean, these little things have a, a, basically an effective, in, re, effective range of 44 inches, um, so they can hop about the battlefield. I, I would never feel too uh, concerned that they wouldn't get into range with, with anything, um, and especially even more so the Helverins, which were the new models uh, from two years ago. Uh, with their armager auto cannons, which we'd never seen before. The abilities for the weapon itself completely ignored the penalty to hit rolls for moving and firing it, um, which is which is great. It's a specific weapon for this this unit, and uh, it it isn't um, brought down by you know the the game's core rules. Uh, but these guys have an effective range of 74 inches, which is quite horrific when you think about it. You put these on a normal standard board, and you know they don't even need to move, and they're probably going to be able to hit everything on that table uh, with a damage of three and uh, they get two of these things potentially getting 12 shots of damage three um, weaponry there um, their damage output is phenomenal the only thing these two things are lacking of course is well the Helverin's lacking any kind of close combat ability they're very strong units and they have those uh, invulnerable shields they, they're just a bit weaker in combat well maybe not the uh, Warglaive but they're just weak in combat from weapons that inflict mortal wounds or have uh, weapons that are AP minus three or something like that. Moving over to uh, the new uh, daddy on the block over here, the, the Preceptor, or in this case, um, Canis Rex. I've built mine as Canis Rex. They introduced this new weapon called, called the Laz Impulsor, this big, big weapon here. Um, you can see that. It, it's kind of, yeah, absolutely crazy. It reminds me of like the Laz Cutter from the... Uh, 
uh, a Trapos. It keeps its range at 36 inches, uh, which follows the both the Errant's Thermal Cannon and the Night Warden's Avenger Gatling Cannon. I think that's a, an interesting point to make that these knights can move 12 inches, but their, their weapons are still 36 inches. So they've got those, that, those effective ranges of 48 inches, which again, on a standard board, after moving, they can pretty much cover anything on that board with, the, with their you know, main weapon. It's kind of a dual weapon in that it can potentially output the same number of shots as the uh, Avenger Gatling Cannon, which has 12, and this has heavy 2D6, but with the same strength, the same AP, and potentially more damage with the D3 instead of the two. But it also brought about uh, kind of like a, a higher strength weapon than even the thermal cannon with the same number of shots, but just at half the range. So they gave you an 18 inch range, heavy D6 weapon, but a strength of 12 and an AP minus four and a damage of D6. So it shares the AP minus four and a damage D6, but it's just half the range uh, of the the thermal cannon, but it is a higher strength. So it's kind of like a dual weapon. You get closer, up close and personal. Well, I say up close and personal, you only need to be 30 inches in range of something, and uh, you can use that high strength anti-armor weaponry. It gave you that, and it also gave you the multiple shots, uh, similar to the, the Gatling cannon. Uh, so phenomenal weapon, um, I'm pleased that they introduced that. They also introduced uh, you being able to put a multi-laser on the night as well, which is a, a, a much welcome addition uh, for preceptors, and I would definitely take it over the, the heavy stubber. Um, it's just the same profile, but with a strength six instead of a strength four. Um, would have been nice to see those multi-lasers on the, the paladins and the errants and, and the other knights, uh, but it's only available for the preceptor and uh, Canis Rex. And speaking of Canis Rex, they brought out this uh, this model uh, for Canis Rex. Um, first time ever, they released a, a character for Imperial Knights. He's got his own profile. He's got his own uh, little model uh, right here as well, like a 28 mil scale model. Fantastic. Thank you for the person that Put it in the comments that that's his life support system. Appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, you know, one of the first times we, we got uh, a little Imperial Knight um, pilot, uh, not counting the resin model uh, that was given away with New Orders of Serastus Knights about three years ago when the with the release of the Warlord Titan. Uh, I managed to bag myself one. Uh, so you'll no doubt see him uh, at some point. He's even got a Lancer Knight uh, helmet as well which is fantastic not dissimilar to the the uh helmet that um sir hector has uh that kind of mirrors um canis's faceplate and he even had his own profile with a cool little archaeotech pistol which is very similar to the uh, custodes venetari uh, pistols so that was great that we got a, a name character with a little uh, individual model too and then finally, if we look at the back there, uh, we're looking over these two behemoths. Uh, it was great to see um, larger knights for only a, a little bit more price. For £100, so £5 more than the, the standard knight kit, we got these kind of mini Warlord Titans. If you can't afford a Warlord Titan or, or you just disagree with the price of one of them, uh, even though they consist of hundreds and hundreds of parts, they'll take you many, many months to build. It's a labor of love and it's a model that will last you many, many years. Uh, and it is, you know, the most expensive model Games Workshop uh, Forge World um, create. Uh, so it accounts to like 0.2% of their model range. Very, very small in comparison to the hundreds and hundreds of models that they do make. But that being said, it gave you a chance of getting your own like mini Warlord Titan in a way for, you know, less than a tenth of, of the cost. If you've never had any knights before and this is your first experience and look at knights, the Valiant or the Castellan, um, if you've just had Space Moons before, they would be incredible uh, linchpins and um, showcases for your army. This Dominus chassis brought in uh, a load of new uh, changes one of which uh, consisted of uh, the 
points of the, the model being 30 power points, very expensive. Um, but this new chassis gave you more wounds. You got almost 30 wounds there. Uh, they are a bit slower at 10 inch uh, movement, but they gave you a, a load of excellent new weapons that we'd never seen before, such as the plasma decimator for the Castellan, which is a 48 inch range weapon giving it an effective range of 58 inches. The shield breaker missiles, the, mi the two missiles on the top, again, 48 inches with a massive strength 10 AP minus four damage D6 weapon, but you can only fire them once. The shield breaker cannons, again, 48 inch range, possible of six strength seven shots each. So you could have almost 12 shots with those cannons. And then they changed the, the Pintel weapons or the point defense weapons uh, to these twin melter guns so they just took the the melter guns on the normal knights put two of them together and gave them two of them so that pushes that um, short range damage output to four shots of strength eight uh, incredible and then finally for the Castellan, we had the Volcano Lance, a mini version of a Volcano Cannon that you find on Shadow Sword tanks or, or Falchion tanks um, that is a whopping 80 inch range weapon. So this thing has a, an effective range of 90 inches. Uh, its strength is huge at 14 with an incredible armor penetration and uh, number of damages. It's also, it's got a great ability of re-rolling wounds when targeting titanic units. So it's definitely a Titan killer, definitely a, a Imperial Knight killer, anything with the word titanic in it. It's good at bringing down. The Iron Shield though for both of them still works the same as normal knights. And then moving on to the Knight Valiant, uh, that brought about the same stat line as the uh, Castellan of course, but uh, we got uh, much shorter range weaponry. I still think the Thunder Coil Harpoon is very, very short range. I think that that should be 18 inches. Um, but I get that it is a, a kind of very close range, um, me almost melee weapon because it is it is attached to the Titan. So I understand why they had to limit it to 12 inches, but that's one of the highest strength, highest AP weapons in the game. Uh, I don't think the Bellicosa Volcano Cannon has an AP of minus six. I think, think it might have a minus five, but this thing is uh, strength 16, AP minus six and a damage of 10. Um, it's definitely the most powerful uh, weapon in the Imperial Knight arsenal. You know, just having that damage 10 is, is ridiculous. Uh, it also had that Flamer, the Conflagration Cannon, which potentially has 18 hits there of strength 7 AP minus 2 and a damage 2, and they automatically hit, so you don't need to worry about that ballistic skill. The Valiant also came with four Shield Breaker missiles um, and, a, and a Shield Breaker Cannon, as opposed to the Castellan on the other side that had two twin shield breaker cannons and two shield breaker missiles. Uh, you can mix and match them though. The option is there to take more cannons than shields and more shields than cannons and vice versa. Uh, but everything else worked the same uh, with the Valiant compared to the uh, uh, Castellan. It just depended uh, which army you, you were gonna go up against. For me personally, with how shooty 8th edition is, I would always go with the Castellan. And I think the Castellan was a very popular um, Imperial Knight at the height of its power. It, it's since been kind of FAQ'd and um, it costs a bit more uh, points now. Um, but it's still an extremely powerful unit uh, on the field and I would go for that over the Valiant because shooting is a big focus in this edition and the Valiant is quite slow anyway at 10 inches. So you've got to get uh, both of those short range weapons um, in range. It's got an effective range there of uh, 28 inches for the conflagration cannon, but only 22 inches for the Thundercall harpoon. And if you're face facing a, a fast army that can outflank it, it's going to get in, into difficulty and, and not going to be able to get into range. Whereas the Castellan, you've got the minimum range weaponry there of 48 inches. Um, so having an effective range of 58 inches compared to less than half at 28 is, is quite a big deal when both of these don't have any melee weapons at all. So what you're doing with the Valiant is you're opening yourself up against longer range weaponry, you're opening up yourself up against faster units, and you're also opening yourself up against uh, melee focus units that you're gonna most probably wander into, um, whereas a Castellan can stay back and just let rip.
so that's like my take on the, the knights and those particularly new ones. Um, uh, it's worth mentioning the Sir Kristen Forge Shrine for £25. You can get a disc out of that from Element Games and um, save you about £5 or so. Uh, but it's a nice little structure. It only had a couple of unique items uh, from the other Mechanicus range, which was a little bit disappointing. Um, I don't think we'd seen the Servo Skull before. Uh, or the command console and the little, little crane thing. Uh, the scenery kits that came after that, uh, such as uh, this tectonic uh, frag drill, um, at least gave you uh, a brand new sort of big item to go along with the Mechanicus um, structure. And uh, likewise with the Battle Sanctum, even for the Sisters of Battle, although that is 65 pounds, it's a huge amount of money. All of those pieces were brand new um, for the kit. And that goes the same for the Mechboy Workshop, which is also quite cheap, um, but introduced all new. And I hope that that's what they will continue to do in the future. Um, you've got Necrons coming soon. I'm really hoping they bring some kind of plastic scenery kit um, for them. And uh, of course, for Age of Sigma, for the Lumineth Realm Lords, that would be great. But the Fortrine itself was one of these units that couldn't be destroyed, couldn't be affected by any attacks or abilities, and was very useful in battle in terms of knights getting to it and being within one inches of it using its uh, auto repair systems, um, such as uh, regaining up to D3 lost wounds, which is incredible. Uh, reloading all of the shield breaker missiles and uh, being able to fire the maximum number of attacks possible which is quite horrific when you're using it for say the conflagration cannon having these 18 shots there but it's it's a movable um, piece of scenery and it would depend on your knights being uh, close to it at the end of their movement phase okay so i'll just insert this size comparison right here in the video and this is the first size comparison i wanted to uh, display it quite clearly shows uh, Sir Hector, a human-sized figure uh, right there, uh, then a Armager Warglaive, the smallest of the knights, Canis Rex or, or a Questorus chassis Imperial Knight uh, Preceptor, and then a Dominus chassis Imperial Knight, a Castellan, and then right here you've got uh, the smallest of the Titans a Lucius Patton Warhound Titan um, with a Plasma Blast Gun and Dual Turbo Laser Destructor. Now these Titans are the smallest, they are Scout Titans, they're very fast, they can cover a lot of ground, they can flank, they can flank uh, Reavers and Warlords uh, pretty well. Typically though they are armed with Vulcan Mega Bolters and Plasma Blast Guns. The Vulcan Mega, Mega Bolters are utilised to strip uh, enemy titan void shields to make them more vulnerable uh, for from attacks from from the larger titans in their mana pool but that gives you some idea of the, the size compared to the, the smallest um, titan okay and the next size comparison i wanted to make is with a mars pattern reaver class titan now this is the main battle titan for titan legios it's very well protected it has battle titan class weaponry and it has the Apocalypse Missile Launcher, which is a very long range weapon. In game terms, it's 360 inches, which far outstrips uh, some of the carapace weapons that Warlords typically carry, and is one of the key weapons at taking down their Void Shields and opening them up to the heavier Battle Titan weapons, such as the Turbo Laser Destructors and their, and their own Volcano Cannons. So that gives you an idea of, of the size there. Of course, I want this size comparison to be as inclusive as possible. That's why I have a mini version of my Reaver Titan right here in the form of the Adeptus Titanicus, um, like for like. And then I also have a Imperial Knight right there. And as you can see, the Imperial Knight just hovers uh, about the knee height of the Reaver, which, as you can see, hovers about the knee height of the Reaver there. So they're doing this correctly. I, I can't wait to see the Imperator class of Titan um, if and when they, they do make it. And because she is a big girl, I've put her as far back as possible uh, with the Knights at roughly the, the same level uh, with her. She's armed with uh, an excellent array of uh, Titan killing weapons such as uh, the two Bellicosa Volcano Cannons and a full array of uh, 
of Battle Titan Turbo Lasers on the carapace. As you can see there, there's Sir Hector. He, you know, probably could scrabble up one of the, the toe armor pieces, maybe. Uh, maybe he's got a grappling hook. Could it launch him somewhere? Who knows? But uh, yeah, that is the, that's the size compared to a normal sized human. And then you've got a, an armager, which yeah, doesn't even get to the knee. A normal size uh, preceptor almost comes up to the knee there. And the Catalan, uh, yeah, pretty much comes up to the knee. Uh, but as you can see, it's it's everything else, which is um, much taller. These thighs are longer than the than the reavers, uh, and so is the carapace and um, you know the, the top part of, of the Titan II. So I just thought I'd give you uh, an example of normal sized knights and human sized models compared to well the largest model that Forge World and Games Workshop create, definitely, and the most expensive. And uh, this is one of the main. Uh, battle titans of titan legios uh, these and reavers reavers being the most numerous but still i would absolutely love an imperator if and when they do make one and an imperator would be almost twice the size of one of these and which price wise it depends if they went for a full detailed interior and i would definitely hope that they would but even if you just double the price uh, to say like the two thousand pounds mark or so, I couldn't see one being any less than three thousand pounds, and that may well be uh, without any of the weapons. But uh, I hope it would be about two and a half thousand without the weapons, and then maybe the weapons are a few hundred pounds each, like three hundred pounds or so for one of the big plasma uh, decimator kind of weapons, plasma eradicator type weapons. But I could see the head being similar price, 60, 70 pounds or so. But that's just a, a big size comparison I wanted to make uh, with Knights and um, Titans. And and in Titan Death, uh, they just went on to explain Legio Mortis having hundreds of Titans, many, many Warlords. And that's just one Titan Legio, uh, backed up by a thousand Knights. Now I have just less than 10 Knights, but to imagine a hundred, let alone a thousand, is in one engagement is incredible anyway that's the end of the size comparisons hope you enjoyed that little extra piece so there you go that is my full review of all of the uh, brand new knights i've been like i say i've been meaning to do this video for a long long time i've only just completed the knight preceptor so thank you so much for your patience in in uh, allowing me to to get these videos out later than expected the chaos knight unboxing and review will be coming soon to the channel it won't be in a year or two years it'll be very soon i will be making that a priority and i hope you'll join me for for those videos what do you guys think of the imperial knights in general uh, which is your favorite model and chassis please do put it in the comments below thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects